I did a job for a guy, helped him build a deck. And about halfway through the job, I couldn't find any of my tools. And I looked over and he had a bench set up and it was uh, a bit like this, but absolutely pristine. And, and I remember looking at him, everything was just lined up like this. And I thought, well, maybe you're a bit OCD or, um, you know, some would say CDO, which is OCD alphabetized. So um, a little bit of um, a little bit of OCD is probably not a bad thing because you actually work more efficiently. Anyway, so everything was like this, set up on a bench, and I just remarked to him at the time. I said, uh, "Your father wasn't a surgeon, was he?" And and it turned out he was. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the seal. Notice the way it comes off. Seal's facing that way. That means that water can't get in. Because when you get hot bearings from being on the road, dunked in cold water, when it goes and it sucks the water in through. So the idea is to have the flange going this way. Well, yeah, so uh, Wayne has uh, got a McGregor 26. Correct. And we're in the process of doing that up. Once he gets his arm right, we'll be out in the water. We'll be able to race each other, mate. Exactly. The only boat to, to sail. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I get more hits on that McGregor post that I did I still haven't than seen any it. of the other videos. I still yeah. haven't seen it. People yeah. love it. No, we'll, we'll get you in there. Yeah, moonlighting? Sailing moonlight. Sailing moonlight. No, not yeah. moonlighting. That's something different altogether. <laughs> okay. Sailing moonlight. Yeah. Ah, the old axles. Don't you love the old bearings? Yeah, so... Uh, dust caps or bearing bags they just sit in like so just tap them right in and you hear it nice firm thinking about uh, when I see a boat trailer coming to me down the road particularly if it's an older boat I might just get off the road because this is what could be coming at you now this was um, This was being towed up and down the highway. So pulling the second axle apart, I came up with one that was sort of in medium condition, one hub in medium condition, and the other one was a completely collapsed bearing that uh, not only destroyed the bearing, but also the races and also the hub itself. So what I decided to do was instead of um, fiddling around trying to do them up, which uh, the, one of them is beyond that, they don't actually cost that much. So I decided to keep 
the one that was in reasonable condition and I'll do that up and keep it as a spare wheel, a complete wheel assembly. So if something goes wrong beside the road, uh, you've got a complete wheel assembly. It's not just a matter of changing a tyre. If something goes wrong with the bearings, it's all set up. And, um, the, and then I'll replace it with two completely new hubs, um, which includes bearings and everything else that goes with it. And then I'll mount the spare on this uh, on this trailer rescue setup, which is uh, essentially it's a it's a stub axle that you can bolt on to your winch post, and uh, and then assemble your wheel with the tire and all the bearings on that. The hub sets in this case come with everything, including bearings and seals. And they actually worked out to be ten dollars cheaper than just the bearings on their own. So all that needs to be done is to pack these with grease, assemble them into the hub, and then load it onto the, the stub axle. And just gradually work my way across that lump of grease in the palm of my hand until it starts to emerge so you can see it's starting to bead through there you know that the bearing's fully packed Well, you're standing in the corner Like you're standing on dry land You've been all around in this part of town And now you're waiting for a perfect man Well, that ain't me, babe But I'll sing you that rock and roll I can't leave, babe Though I should go Now don't look at me suspicious Like there's something I don't see you got a smile so vicious that I know I'll let it be. But it's heat, babe, burning in and up and out my soul. Gasoline, babe, but you don't know. You're so uptown, uptight, white light and a bottle of wine. Anyway, is that gonna make you feel alright? So that's the hard part done. All those uh, rollers and wobble rollers removed. So these bolts will be replaced with new ones. And uh, these back ones here, they don't need to be removed because they're not adjustable. This is where it starts if you want to save your back when you're trying to get your boat on or particularly off the trailer. The shaft running through here is seized and imagine once that, that's weighted that's not going to slide at all. So that's why you see people straining their backs trying to push their boats down off the trailer whereas they should just glide off. So I'm going to take these apart, knock the pin out and I'm going to grease it. I can't drink you off my senses I can't chase you off my trail Because the getting is good in my neighborhood Where you know that you can never fail Such a scene, babe Black boots and a bottle of shine Gasoline, babe, but you don't mind You're so uptown, uptight White light and a bottle of wine now tell me, babe, is that gonna make you feel all right?
So it's away with the old and the really difficult launching. We got rid of the bunks which caused a lot of friction. We replaced them with nicely greased rollers. I've reduced the height off the ground by probably at least 80 inches and no more difficult and dangerous launching and retrieval even easier. Virtually just drive us straight on. The bear boat is sitting on a water line nicely. I've got a lot of work now as I move on from the trailer to the more interesting part which is doing up the boat. Cockpit floor is first. A long drawbar corresponding with the axle being a long way away from the ball means that it's a lot easier to back. Short drawbars are really to be avoided. The length of the drawbar also enables me to back the trailer well into the water so you can virtually just drive the boat on. Of course it would be ideal if you didn't have to submerse the bearings in the water. At least it takes 20 minutes or more to rig which gives the bearings time to cool down. One design fault in these early trailers is they didn't really enable the water to drain in and out quickly. The only reason this trailer has survived is probably because it grew up in a freshwater lake. I'm considering drilling a few more holes. It helps if you've got somebody that can winch the boat on for you while you steady it and usually there'll be someone there that's willing to, to uh, lend a hand. However, after this first launching I took it back to the driveway and I replaced the winch with an electric winch. Well, that went about as well as one could ever expect. Well, after a, a remarkably small amount of cursing and swearing, in fact, I'm not even sure if there was any cursing and swearing, we managed to swap the uh, boat over onto the new trailer and um, just have a look at the way that it was set up there. So this was all measured prior to putting it on there and it's laying a bit off centre went on so easily just amazing because the long drawbar fantastic pushes it right back into the water so that everything's fully submerged that's why you've got to be really good at getting your bearings and seals and stuff right um, <clears throat> because it's always going to be submerged on a boat like this but the great benefit is that it's lowered the boat probably about a couple of feet making it easier to climb in and out of when you're working on it but also meaning that it requires um, a very um, limited amount of water to launch it in, even at, at dead low tide as it was last night. So these uh, wobble rollers at the back are just to guide it on and they work superbly. And then the configuration there with the cross members with a deep sort of V in them to accommodate a, a deep V fiberglass boat presumably um, get the keel right down as close to the axle as you could possibly get it perfect swapping it over to an electric winch has changed it from being a three person job into a one person job I'll be showing you some launching and retrieval it just glides straight off and um, you can virtually drive the boat onto the trailer hook up the electric winch stand on the pontoon push the button it all self-centers and just watch it glide up onto the trailer. Simple as that. Of course, it gets harder when the current is strong or when there's strong wind. Thanks for watching. Um, as always, please subscribe, like, write your comments in the video. That helps me to grow the channel and, um, and it makes all the time that goes into creating these videos worthwhile. See you again next week.